Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and uh, the two systems that you see right here, you got the worm bag over here, the uh, vermi bag mini with the European night crawlers in it. And you've got a vermi bag here too, resting within this bus box. It's the vermi bag tote. It's got my African night crawlers in it. For the longest time, I only had two bins with my European and with my African night crawlers in them. And it was 10 days ago that I finally Oh, finally got a second bin running with another batch of African night crawlers. So all I did was I went into the uh, I went into the vermi bag tote and I pulled out what I estimated to be about half of what was in that bag over there on the right and launched off a new bin. And the bin was built with some food items um, included. Um, but after ten days, I would think that the worms have probably probably put a pretty good dent into what was already placed in there. So I figured it was time to give this bin its, I guess, technically second feeding, if you count that first feeding that was included in the build of the bin. But other than um, the food that was part of the construction of the bin, this is really the first feeding that's being applied uh, now that the worms have actually been placed into the bin and have been in there for some time. After 10 days, I'm curious to see how things are looking in here, because I've not checked in on it at all. I've not even peeked under the plastic. So my hope is that everything's working well in that bin. Um, and we're going to get it up on the bench. We're going to add some food, bedding, and uh, hopefully everything's in good shape. So let's get to work. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention this white bin on the bottom here. That's the bin that I built a few days ago, and that's going to become my secondary bin with European night crawlers in it. So at some point soon, we'll be dipping into the Vermi Bag Mini over there to populate this second European Nightcrawler container. And then I'll feel a little bit better knowing that I've got at least one backup system for each of my Nightcrawler populations. All right, let's get to work on this African Nightcrawler bin. Okay, so we've got um, a sheet of plastic covering things here. And Especially when the bins are still kind of new, like this one is, I always like to have plastic covering the the bin so that it uh, it doesn't lose moisture too rapidly. And um, in the case of this, I actually took the cardboard covering that I nor normally rest on top of the plastic and I actually slipped it inside of the bag and then I taped it shut. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier to handle the plastic this way. And um, this way you can just pull it out, you know, pull it off and uh, chuck it aside without it flopping all over the place and dropping stuff all over the place too. So now the, um, I don't know, the one thing I notice sometimes in my newest bins is that the worms just don't take as much of a shine to the, the, the newspaper that covers the top surface yet. Sometimes it takes some time for them to want to climb up onto here, but usually it's a it's a really popular spot covered in worms because of all the moisture that collects there. But it always seems to me like in the very, very beginning, you don't see a lot of worms cruising up there quite yet. But in time they will, I'm sure I'm sure of it. Um so let's see what we've got here. The mid, the bin would still be at this point after only ten days, mainly the materials that it was built with, or at least I would assume so because, you know, they've not really had a lot of time to work the material through. So if we start tilling into here, we're still going to find mainly leaves, cardboard, paper, all of those um, carbon-based bedding type materials that you use for building a, a new worm bin. And then the way I applied the feeding, or at least the food, if you want to treat it as just food that was part of the build of the bin, perhaps not quite a feeding quite yet, um, the way I applied the the food bits to the build of the bin was pretty all over the place, kind of scattering the food bits all over the place. So um, a little different from the way I usually feed. I usually feed in one particular space so that when you come back the next time, you normally see a pretty good concentration of worms in that one spot. But um, in, in the case of feeding a, a newly launched bin, we're not going to see that yet because there's just no one concentration of food in here yet. It's just scattered all over the place. But our first feeding that we're going to apply now is going to be focused and we're going to do what we normally do lately. We just put the food right down the middle and all the worms can come from all directions to get at it. 
And if they don't like the fact that it's frozen, they can stay away. If at some point for, um, you know, sometimes newly added foods might heat up a little bit in a bin before it becomes hospitable for the worms to occupy and start eating it. If that should happen, I know that they've got plenty of room to retreat to if the bin starts to heat up. Um, so I just like feeding down the middle. There's other ways to feed. You know, some people like to move the feeding zones around the bin, keep the worms chasing the food supply. It's really whatever your personal preference is. So you don't have to go deep to get to the bottom of this container. And um, I can see we've already located some of the food items that were used to build this bin. And I don't know if I might have you know, pulled some of this stuff. This mango seed looks like it's probably been in service for some time now. So I'm trying to remember now that I, um, I probably pulled a bunch of slow composting food items out of the, the other African nightcrawler system to build this one. So if we keep probing around, we might find other bits of leftover food from the initial build of the bin. Or maybe not, it's hard to say. But one thing for sure, this um, this is one of those sort of items that you would not, you know, expect to see broken down right away. It's a it's a mango seed, very very tough item. As you can see, I'm even having a hard time folding it or bending it, deforming it. Usually they go in there and they want that seed that's in here because this outer husk is maybe not as quite as tempting as the the seed itself that's inside. But they'll eventually eat the whole thing, and um, and like I said, it'll just take time. So I'm going to set that aside and we'll be sure to include that. Dump it right back down when we're done feeding here. But, um, you know, just curious. Like I said, we're not going to expect to find large concentrations of worms anywhere at this first feeding. At this early stage, you would have to guess that the worms have probably just kind of spread out and occupied all regions of the bin looking for food. And since food was placed all, all throughout the bin, um, you would kind of expect to find worms in all different sections. You know, unless you just happen to, you know, stumble on perhaps a section where they're still working the food down that had been placed in there when the bin was built. And, you know, depending on what kind of food it was, after 10 days, it's possible that there's still leftovers, as we saw with that mango seed. But I typically try to feed materials that have a, um, a greater likelihood of being broken down pretty fast. The mango seeds are, you know, just sort of the oddball types of tougher, compost, slow composting food items that I sometimes include in my bins. But I usually, uh, I usually lean towards feeding stuff that's probably got a better chance of breaking down pretty quickly as opposed to feeding stuff that's going to take forever. So there's not a lot of depth in this bin. I've pushed everything up, um, opening up a pretty huge space over here. And I still only, you know, don't even reach the halfway point of this bin. So I usually don't start out with a tremendous amount of material. I try to size the initial bedding and environment to make it proportionally realistic for the amount of worms I'm placing in there. So, um, so we've got plenty of room to add a lot more material here, if we wish. So I've got a fairly large amount of food scraps in here. And um, I guess, you know, one option would be to simply dump it all straight in. Um, but I'd like to do something that I've been applying lately to my bins, is uh, using pieces of paper as little wrappers to place the food items into. And... Um, and by doing so, you not only add the food, which is kind of a good nitrogen-rich um, food item, the worms also need a carbon source as a food item. So not only does the paper serve as a bedding material, as does the leaves, as do the cardboard bits and everything else, the paper serves not only as a good bedding material, but it also doubles as food, too. And a food source that's um, kind of the brown, if you will, if you're talking kind of composting terms, um, in composting language, there's always the greens, which is the nitrogen-rich materials in your compost setup. And then there's the browns. And the browns are the things that are referred to um, the paper or the 
you know, the things that are the more carbon-based food items. So I like this, um, I like this approach using these little food bundles. Number one is because it does shelter the food from being potentially sticking through the surface of the bin, making it sort of a tempting spot for the, you know, few, I mean, I've got a few insects in my basement. I am, in, I am indoors, but still some insects do manage to zero in on the fact that there's, you know, a pretty plentiful supply of food always being administered to these bins down here. So I do have a few insects cruising around down here in my basement that will try to capitalize on a supply of food if you just put it out there for them and make it easy for them to access. So I typically try to make it a little bit more difficult for um, any sort of flying insects to get at any food that I put into my worm bins. So I think that these little bundles help protect the food from that point of view. Um, but luckily I'm also covering up with the newspaper and with the plastic and the other things that help protect the, uh, the material in the bin from bugs that might take an interest in it. And um, you know, this is a little bit of a, um, maybe a bad example. I wouldn't want to use this as a typical example because typically you want to feed your bins um, proportional to the number of worms that are in the bin and I would think that this bin has something in the neighborhood of 500 worms um, so the food that I'm placing in here you know if you're just looking at it visually you'll know that um, this is just way more than uh, a bin of this size needs for a feeding so I think by really going generous on this feeding here I think it'll give us a, a lot of leeway in terms of needing to come back into here anytime soon to apply another feeding so we're um you know we're we're putting we're putting ourselves into a, a fairly long timeline i believe before this bin is going to be in the need of more food with this much chow added <laughs> so look at all that that is one heck of a feeding so uh you know what i'm going to do i'm going to break out my grit because you know a new worm bin you never know if you've got baby worms uh, hanging out in here that might need the grit to be able to digest their food um, usually if you if you got an older bin or at least if I've got an older bin I know that um, because there have been numerous applications of grit over time I know that the bin is already pretty uh, pretty densely uh, filled with all kinds of material including a lot of grit that the worms can take advantage of but in a brand new bin like this one, um, where grit would have been used to build the bin originally, in a new bin, I would think that the supply of uh, unused grit throughout the bin is uh, rather sparse and scattered out. Um, so in the beginning, at least, I do like to be a little bit more generous when it comes to the application of grit. So I've got a, um, a box of leaves here that I'm gonna use to start covering up this feeding. A lot of times I'll just try to bring back a lot of this material that was um, out in the middle, the stuff that I pushed off to the side, but I bought in a, a, a large box of um, leaves the other day. And uh, in a case like this, I think with a, a feeding of this magnitude, it probably makes really good sense to go ahead and give them a, a really abundant amount of um, leafy matter, you know, in other words, just, you know, carbon food source, a, a bedding type food to place over the food because as this food down here starts to break down, um, having it combined with all of this bedding material will make it into a really cozy spot for the worms. So I guess my main concern was that maybe I had done something wrong when I built the bin or maybe there was something that had gone awry in here since I launched the bin with the um, with the worms. So it's that first check-in that I'm always a little bit anxious of. I mean, I've, I've never really had anything go terribly wrong with any of my new bins, but there's always that unknown, that, that aspect of it, which makes you wonder, you know, am, am I in for a, a shocking surprise or is everything gonna be pretty much normal? And luckily everything was pretty much normal. So I'm glad to see that. And um, hopefully what we've done here is set up a really nice cozy spot for the African night crawlers to start making themselves further at home. In. So let's get things here covered back up. 
back on with this piece of newspaper covering which will rest right beneath the plastic and like I said before typically these um, sheets of plastic that are covering the material in the bin are where the uh, moisture that would normally just evaporate into the air get caught so as the uh, as the evaporating moisture gets caught on the plastic it gets uh, gets dumped right back down onto the first surface right beneath it which is that newspaper right there and it typically makes for a really cozy spot that the worms really enjoy coming up for so I wouldn't be surprised if the next time we come in here we might start seeing some worms hanging out on that newspaper like I said I was a little surprised not to see any but that just seems to be the trend whenever I uh, look inside of one of my newer bins I don't see worms quite occupying that space yet but I'm sure they will in time. All right, everyone, that was just a quick little check-in on my newest worm bin, my now second bin of African night crawlers. And uh, like I said before, pretty soon we'll be launching off a second bin in which I've got the European night crawlers, and that'll be in that clear bin that you saw on the floor earlier. So that's it for today. I think, uh, I think before I shut the camera off and go start putting things away and getting things cleaned up, I'm just gonna uh, really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to give me a quick thumbs up. It's always really appreciated. And also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's always really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.